welcome to Afternoon Express. I'm Bonnie Bully. And I'm Jeannie D. We're halfway through the week and summer is in full swing. And I'm today so excited. we have one of the most inspirational women of our country in our loft. Her name is Abigail Ntsweko. Ntleko. Ntleko, yes. And this woman has dedicated her entire life to service. In fact, she adopted 30 HIV positive orphans and is just it's such an incredible. incredible. What a beautiful yeah. story. And we tell yeah. that story today. In fact, she's about to release her memoirs and we are giving away copies of the book right here on Afternoon Express. Awesome. And then later on in the show, in the show, we'll be tackling a very serious subject, child abuse. How do you tell the first signs of abuse? and how do those who've gone through it experience it emotionally and physically and how do they deal with that trauma? We have a clinical psychologist in the loft to give us some insight. Exactly, it's going to be quite an intense mm -hmm. show but communicate with us. We are live so be sure to call us on 083-913-3728 yeah, and of course we are on Facebook. All you need to do is go and find Afternoon Express on Facebook or tweet us at Afternoon Chat using our official hashtag Afternoon, Afternoon Express. Express. Over to you Danilo. Indeed. Good afternoon, South Africa, and welcome to Afternoon Express. My name is Daniel Aquisto, and as we've been speaking about this abuse thing, you know that the arts have been very much involved with spreading messages. One of the films that's caused a lot of controversy at the moment in South Africa, and it's a film that I think everybody should go and check out at some point in their life, this act, Anna. We've got two of the cast members joining us in the loft today. It's really cool to have Mordne as well as Izzel join us. Uh, you guys have got an incredible story. So you're smiling, and this movie is intense. <laughs> Did you not have, like, an emotional breakdown shooting this film? Not really. It was an amazing experience to be part of this film because mm. I grew as a person and as an actress. Well, there you go. That's the importance of the arts. I'm sure you'll find out more about their story later on. So if you want to know what this and is all, is, is all about. Make sure you stay tuned to Afternoon Express. Now, joining me in the kitchen is my brother from Another Mother, Anda Dlepu. How are well, you, my well. friend? Good, good yourself? Awesome. So you're making us a dish that is an absolute mouthful today on the show. I'm not even going to attempt it. I just <laughs> hand this over to you. What are you making? It might sound like a mouthful, but it really is simple today. We've got maple mustard chicken wings. They are free-range chicken wings, which are already packed in already mm. a mustard dressing for you. We've got roasted veggies, which we'll just be dressing with some garlic, some oil, and some herbs. And then we've got uh, some sweet corn, which we'll be dressing in a sweet, in a chipotle and lime butter. Okay, if you're ADD like me, I was already on to the wall <laughs> paint at that point where we started to describe it. And if you want to know what it is we're making and how to get cooking with us, afternoonexpress.co.za. It's much easier to read it than to say it out loud. You can find the recipe and the shopping list available for you over there. So today's show is an absolutely inspirational show. Joining us on the couch right now, Bonnie has got our first guest. Sister Abigail Ntleko is a remarkable 79-year-old nurse and healthcare activist who has dedicated her life as a caregiver and mother to more than 30 children which she has adopted as they were abandoned or orphaned due to HIV AIDS. Her selfless work in the rural areas and the challenges she overcame has been hailed as an inspiration by various influential people such as Desmond Tutu and she was a winner of SABC2 Women of the Year Award under the Social Welfare category in 2006. She's also also received the Unsung Heroes of Compassion Award presented by the Dalai Lama in 2009. Sister Avi, it's an absolute honor to have you in the loft with us. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Thank Congratulations you. on your book, which is launching on the 31st of October, oh, okay. and it's called Empty Hands. And mm -hmm. in it, you, it's a memoir about your remarkable life and the work that you've done. Why did you decide to write this memoir? Um, I decided to write this uh, book about my life to encourage people all over the world to be able to stand and see that the challenges are not really bogging you down, but they are just like staircases going up um, to a higher place. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I'm just showing the audience your gorgeous book. Mm. Why did you call it Empty Hands? I called it Empty Hands because my father once asked me to have um, two hands full of sand just out of the blue. Then when I came to him with this um, sand, he said, no, throw it away. Oh, you want to, to receive something? He took out a banana, peeled it and said, where must I put the banana? I said, well, <laughs> uh, my hands are full of the sand that you have sent me. He said, get rid of it if you want to. If you don't want to, I'll put the banana, peeled banana on top of the sand. Then uh, wow. I emptied the hands and wiped and came straight to him and he gave me the banana. Then I said, Dad, what, do you, what did you mean by this? He said, I meant that you must never hate anybody and you must let go everything that is going to dismantle your life, like uh, holding on things which are disastrous. Yeah. And then you can receive love from 
the men above and also can share it with other people. Now wow. we've got the banana, you can eat it if you feel you too full, can give it to anybody. But if, if you've got sand, which is not useful, yes. I can't put something. God doesn't put love on top of all the hatred. Wow. Mm. <laughs> Wow, what an incredible lesson. Yeah. I mean, you've had to overcome your own hardships to, in order to actually be able to show so much compassion and love to people. Mm. Um, your father didn't believe in educating girls, but mm. still, this, despite that, you educated yourself and became a nurse. Mm. Yes, tell us about that experience mm. and that journey. It was a very hard journey, but that has taught me a lot of lessons to be able not to look at the challenges as something that will put you down. But looking at the challenges like staircases going up, if you're going up the stairs, you find something on top. But if you're down there and sitting there, oh, there are problems and looking at the problems, you'll never go anywhere. Yeah. So I'd always take the challenges as staircases, not really problems, but challenges, which helps you to be motivated to do something. So I was motivated. My father didn't want me to go to school and I had a lot of problems from a poor family. But I felt that um, that's helped me to be able to think because if I had soft life, I might have got the baby and sat down and started drinking. Otherwise, I was so keen to have a bright future. So wow. in spite of all that, I still wow. went ahead. And you passed on that gift to so many people. You adopted your first child at a time when it was frowned upon for an unmarried woman mm. to adopt a child. Yes. Where did you meet this child? And tell me about that experience um, of seeing the child for the first time and knowing that mm. they had to be with you. Zuzu was from our neighbor. And uh, this guy got married to an Indian girl. You know, during that time that if you marry um, somebody from the other culture, it was a, a disaster. The family used to um, disown, you. disown yeah. you. So she was disowned. And then this guy started being mentally ill and she was abusing her and she decided to, to leave, but she couldn't leave with a, a mixed child to her home. She relocated to a colored um, area and left the child with the grandparents. Most unfortunately, the grandmother died and then this old man married another young, youngish uh, wife who, who didn't like uh, this child because the child is mixed. Everybody, when, it, when they come home, they always say, whose child is this one? Uh, whose child is this one? That made yeah. her not yeah. to like the child. And it was taken to the, to the, pat, the maternal aunt who didn't like it because this child had yes. features of yes. her children and she had girls now. They, were, they pointed out they were sleeping around with other nations. Yeah. And so, this, this is yeah. the child you ended up adopting. I ended up adopting. And you child. ended up adopting 30 children. Yes. And some of which um, you adopted from hospitals after they'd been left to die because they were ill and they yes. had HIV. Yes. I had one that uh, is HIV positive, disabled, physically disabled. And she, when they brought the child to me, they said she's left with three weeks to die. She, she was one year old, less than. Uh, uh, four kgs. She was born 950 grams. And um, they said, well, don't even worry if the child eats. It's okay if the child doesn't eat. It's only three weeks that are left for her to go. And then it didn't happen that way. She's nine years old. She's in oh. grade one. She's not walking. She's disabled because she's spina bifida, but she's such a lovely. She sings beautifully. And she's mentally, she's fine. Oh, she's doing wow. well at school, wow. but she can't walk. That's truly inspiring. Mm -hmm. One last question. What was it like meeting the Dalai Lama? Oh, it was wonderful. I learned a lot from him, just from his speech, which was so short. It was fantastic. And uh, it, it, it brought back, because they, he also said, there's a wise words that he gave us. He said, as honorees, if you can Please do help people as honorings, but if you can't help them, don't help them. So oh. that uh, gave wow. me something that wow. if I can't help somebody, I mustn't destroy that somebody uh, emotionally. Oh, thank you so yeah. much, Sister Abigail. Your story is so you. remarkable. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Um, today we're giving away two copies of Empty Hands to two lucky viewers. Simply SMS the keyword books, your name and city to 33728. T's and C's apply and are available on our website afternoonexpress.co.za. Competition closes at 10 to 5, so hurry up and enter now. After the break, Danilo makes us some maple and mustard chicken wings and we chat to the cast members of the controversial Afrikaans film, Dis Ek Anna. Don't go away. Six. Feel good, pay less. Welcome back to Afternoon Express, South Africa. Now, if you're in Durban this weekend, then make sure you head down to the Good Food and Wine Show. It's happening at the Durban Exhibition Centre. The show starts on Friday, that's this Friday, until the Sunday, the 1st of November. There are apparently some international chefs that are going to be there, delicious fine dining dishes and award-winning wine. It's definitely the place to be this weekend. And if you are there, make sure that you stop off at the SABC Theatre, where some familiar faces from the SABC family will be doing their thing. Tickets are available at CompuTicket at a cost of 9 90 Rand for adults and children under 12 get in for free. But if you want to know more of these details, make sure you stay tuned to Afternoon Express and we'll share them with you until the weekend. Now in the kitchen right here on Afternoon Express, we're going to be winging it. And not only winging it, we're going to be making mustard and maple wings. That's correct. And also over and above that, doing some veg. But maybe let's just start with the veg. Okay. So we're going to be roasting the veg today. So I'll do the boring part. All right. <laughs> we're not going to peel the veg at all or okay. anything. We're going to give it a bit of a rusticness to it. So the veg has already been washed. I think you can just take the carrots on your side. Just top and tail. Discard the tops and tail. Okay. And then cut it lengthwise in half. As in this way? Yes, okay, that's cool. correct. Yeah. And then I'll start cutting the button at the side here. So, so you're making a sort of farm style that we're going on here with these roast veg. That's correct. Very, very rustic. And then we'll just finish it off with just some garlic and some rosemary just to add some flavor to it. Cool. So roast veg is always like one of those staple things you have to have when you're doing something roasted in the oven. And it's one of those dishes that you can either do well or not so well. What are some of the tricks you have for people that are trying to roast veg? Because I always find just drizzling with olive oil, salt and pepper just doesn't do it for me. It does actually do it. It's, I mean... From my point of view, I think I like adding some flavor to it. So, I mean, from your garlic, your herbs, your rosemary, mm. your thymes, your sage. So, any herb, any dried herb or fresh herb would take you a very long way to actually add yeah. some more flavor into that. But the tough thing is, obviously, everyone pre preheats their oven and we all preheat our ovens to get them ready. The, the problem with, obviously, preheating it is that you I always worry that my veggies are going to come out mushy. How do you make sure they come out that nice golden brown crispy so, in the outside? So, just preheat the oven to 200 and just leave your tray inside the oven. Once your oven has actually been preheated, then you can actually just add your veg to the tray, to the warm tray, and, and just sprinkle some, some olive oil oh, onto okay. it and then put it back in the oven. Because there's no grill function, because I don't know how a whole bunch of our chefs that come on here put in a whole bunch of veggies into a tray, put it into the oven, and it comes out crispy golden brown, <laughs> mine comes out like mash. No, there's, it's just you're doing it incorrectly, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> or I have a broken oven, blame the oven, don't blame me. <laughs> so you can see with the onions, I've just also just left the skin rustic. on, actually, and just let, let, let it be rustic. Okay. That's perfect like that. Lovely. So quite simply, I'll actually pull some of the rosemary off the sprigs, just to sprinkle it over there. Cool. Let's do the potatoes too? Yeah, please. Just do them. Oh, yeah, just quarter them. Just two potatoes will be fine. Have you pre-boiled these? Because these are very soft. No, not at all. No. Oh, wow. Not at all. So, soft I mean, with, potato. With the rosemary, you can see I'm just going to add some of the sprigs whole and just sprinkle some. And then once again, it's just drizzling of olive oil. Mm. And be very generous with your olive oil. Olive oil is good for you. <laughs> I've heard that if you cook olive oil, it's not as good for you as if it's raw, but yeah, still, so, the best so, kind of oil. Yeah, so at high temperatures, olive oil doesn't work that well, but at low temperatures, it works wonderfully. Awesome. So you can see, you can add whole garlic, or you can add this uh, fresh garlic, or this cooked garlic that's already been crushed for you. Mm. That's a rock show, because again, I always complain about having to cut up garlic. It's the worst <laughs> thing to do. It sticks on your fingers for weeks and weeks. So you can days. see, that's not that's weeks. basically, that's the veg, that's the veg part of this done. Cool. And all we'll do is we'll just mix it up, and then we'll, we'll just put it in the oven. So with the chicken, all we're going to do with the chicken is just, as well, just take it straight out of the packaging. Oh, so I was waiting for you to get ready with your maple, maple and maple. mustard and decide <laughs> I'm going to drizzle this on here. You've got a pre-made one. Convenience, convenience for you. So this is just basically, it's chicken wings which have been sitting Ooh, in yum. a maple mustard dressing. It looks amazing. So it's been marinating for a long time, so all those flavors are nice and juicy in yeah, there. That's correct. And also it's been under vacuum, so yeah. the flavors have actually been doing... Quick trick of the trade, can I ask you? 
please go. Chicken's always a dangerous one, right? Because you're always worried about getting salmonella. salmonella. That's but in terms of the sauces that go in it, do you pre-cook the sauce, like obviously the leftover? Because if you put it on the grill, you can't just pour sauce over it and then grill it in the oven. That's a very good, that's what a very good the question. Sauce? With me, I actually, I usually, I'd rather first cook the sauce on the side and just keep it warm at least. Uh -huh. So any of the chicken juices which are in the sauce are actually coagulated and yes. they cook. So and they cook it more. It is safe for you to actually pour the, the sauce on in the last five minutes of mm. it cooking. Or some people, what they do is they do put it in the microwave. So they'll put it in the bowl, the excess sauce, put it in the microwave, cook and it just all, cook kill all the, the kill pathogens. All the, yeah, all kill all that and then pour it over. So that's simply the chicken, and then we'll also, as you were saying, we'll drizzle some of the marinade in just before we actually, Amazing. just before so it's cooked. This thing goes into the oven at what temperature? In the oven, 180, uh, 180 for about 15 to 20 minutes, and Lovely. we'll just keep an eye on it. Cool, so we're going to keep an eye on this. Don't forget our recipe is on our website, afternoonexpress.co.za. The shopping list is also available for you over there, so you can cook along with us right here, live on Afternoon Express. Now, we are speaking about some very serious topics on the show today, some that everybody needs to put their ear to. Joining us on the couch now, Jeannie's got our next guest. Thanks, Danilo. Now, the powerful local film, Dis Ek Anna, is an adaptation of Anshin Trotsky's best-selling novels, Dis Ek Anna and Die Start Die an Anna Bruver, which deals with issues surrounding sexual abuse of children. It received Best Film, Best Director and Best Actor for Mwane Fissa at the local, uh, local Silver Scalum Film Festival. It opened in local cinemas on the 23rd of October and is currently also showing at the Gone to Africa in Motion Festival in Edinburgh. Joining us on the couch are the cast members of the film, Mornay Fissel, Fissa and Isel Bezaydenot. <laughs> <laughs> and I called you a scam. <laughs> but what's actually also really great news for you guys is the film hit number three on our local box office this weekend. Mm. For an Afrikaans yeah. film, that's huge. Yeah. It was more popular than the rugby, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Don't even mention yeah, it. So, yeah, we had a tough opening weekend, I think yeah. all films yeah. had with all the rugby, and still we had the um, highest gross per cinema exactly. um, for the film. And, yes, we're very grateful that people are going, you know, are going out to support the film. Give us a brief synopsis of what the film's about. Right. Should I do it? You do it. Okay. <laughs> um, the, uh, it's, it's, it's an adaption from the novel um, that L.B. Lotter wrote, it's the pseudonym. She, she wrote the book anonymously because I think it was, she says, too hard for her to, to, to speak about it and to use her own name and that's how it was going to stay. And then she wrote the book, it became so popular, she wrote a second one, Die Start in Anna Brewer, and then decided to go public and um, reveal her identity, which is also very brave. And then, so the film is basically about um, Anna, played by Hazel, and it's about the abuse, uh, the abuse that she suffered um, um, by her father-in-law, uh, um, a stepfather. That's <laughs> 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 By her stepfather for about, for about four years, from the ages of 12 to 16, um, when she ran away. And um, yeah, it's, it's kind of, um, it delves into the, you know, upper class society where money and um, status buys you silence, and mm. and you know, um, and yes. So the film is really about that, and it's also about Anna then as a grown up coming back and confronting, confronting him. You know, it's one of those topics that when you hear, it mm. kind of gives you a chill down the back of your mm. spine because it's one of those things that you don't ever. You don't want to know that it even exists, yeah. but it does. What is it like to climb inside the head of a paedophile, essentially? Um, yeah, it, it was it was quite hard because it, it was never a kind of part that I um, imagined doing. Um, you know, you, you'd rather play Bond and um, you know get the girl and uh, or, yeah. you know, play you'll romantic there, hero, etc. <laughs> yes. Um, so, but I always knew that maybe one day I'd be called to play something more important or, you know, uh, that was more important than um, so kind of like a Euro character. And um, it, it was hard getting into the character. I, I listened to a lot of podcasts and um, I watched some documentaries of paedophiles and the different types of, of, of paedophiles and molesters and um, sexual abusers out there. Um, and that was quite hard to just watch these people that are, you know, um, could be could be anyone. Um, I think we have this perception that they all they look crazy or you know they they, they look like typical yeah, bad guys. Yeah, you want guys. to recognise them out of society, it, but they don't. They but, blend but in. It's so hard to recognise mm. that it's only it's only in that in that home where it's recognised and not outside. Um, exactly. So it was very hard to get into 
the mind of that character, but mm, I felt that I needed to play it, um, exactly. that it was important to do. And I think it's so wonderful that we are now making a film um, that's about a topic that Films are usually not made, you know, they exactly. usually don't make films about. Well, so, I mean, for, for a 16-year-old as well, to be able to have that emotional maturity, what was it like for you playing the victim? It was very challenging. There wasn't one scene that I could say was easy. All the emotions was different emotions that I should have played. But there mm. were amazing people on set. I mean, the cast, Monet and Nicola, helped me and guided me to say, OK, here's a few tips. Maybe do that and do this. Exactly. Um, the director oh. <laughs> is also amazing. She guided you on such a way that you always knew what to do. There was none uncertainty. Yeah. Did, did you ever have your own personal moments that you felt affected by the story or the character? Not really while we shot the film, but mm. after the film, I must say, me as Isel, I'm still Isel. But when I see something that's about sexual abuse or I hear a true story, then it touches me and then I get sort of emotional. Exactly. And I'm also more sympathetic towards victims. And now you know how important it is for victims who are even watching the show to know that it's important to speak out yeah, definitely. and tell somebody. Definitely. Exactly. Now, the film is being received so well across the world. I mean, what does that feel like for an Afrikaans film to really be celebrated at film festivals and with audiences across the world? Well, I, I, it is an Afrikaans film, but I think the film... the film has its own language. Yeah. Mm. It's not an Afrikaans film. It's a South African film, and it's not just a South African yeah. film. It's a universal It's a universal problem, and it's a universal issue. And um, y you don't need to, like, when you watch foreign language pictures, you know, that you don't need to understand the language. You have the subtitles, but certain things are so, um, so, so, so strong that exactly. that it transcends language and i think that's what this film is going to do internationally as well so yes it is an afrikaans film and it's good that we're not just making you know silly romantic comedies exactly. and we're making some important films too because i think it's important that we also become part of the conversation in this country um and and start tackling issues that South yeah. Africans are dealing with and also saying, but this happens in our communities as well. And Absolutely. that's quite a brave thing to do for a producer and to, to take this uh, project on and say, we have the same problems, um, but we have better ways of keeping yeah. it quiet. We're going to be yeah. chatting about this a little bit later. But now don't miss Dis Ek Anna, currently in cinemas nationwide with English subtitles. I cannot wait to watch it. In December, it will show in Amsterdam as part of the post-apartheid cinema festival and thereafter in Palm Springs in California. So best of luck to the cast and the crew. After the breaks, clinical psychologist Jenny Rose joins us to chat about child abuse and we highlight the importance of taking your pet to the dentist. Sustainable fishing that leaves fish for the future. Are you with us? Lovely to have you back with us here on Afternoon Express on SABC3. Child abuse can be defined when a parent or caregiver, whether through action or failing to act, causes injury, death, emotional harm, or risk of serious harm to a child. These issues are a big problem across South Africa, and quite often nothing is done about it, or the people that surround the child don't even know that the abuse is happening. So joining us on the couch is clinical psychologist Jenny Rose, who works a lot with families and parent-child relationships. Welcome, Jenny. Thanks, Bonnie. Jenny, what are the telltale signs of when your child is being abused? I think it's quite difficult to pinpoint exact signs or symptoms that may indicate abuse because for one child they might externalise and act out a lot where another child might become quite withdrawn and feel quite isolated. But I think the biggest telltale sign is that there tends to be a change in a child's functioning. So as a parent or caregiver or even as a teacher at school, if you start to see that there's a sudden change in the way a child engages with others, the way they function, then this is often a warning sign. Um, what we certainly see a lot of the time is that there's a fallout in academic functioning. Mm. This is often where we first can pinpoint that something's going on. So a child that was maybe getting 60s or you know 70s now suddenly drops down to 
failing around yeah. 40s and 50s. So that often is the, the time that you do see that there could be a change or something that's going on. Um, with regards to sexual abuse in particular, mm -hmm. which we're talking about a lot mm -hmm. today, you often see bedwetting. There's often a lot of regressing. So children actually regress to younger stages of development. Um, and bedwetting is then also definitely one that you may wow. see. I'm sure many parents out there want to know this. I, as a parent, would want to the, know mm. this myself. Is How do I, when I want to ask my child if there's something going on, create a safe environment or converse with them in mm. a way that makes them feel safe so they don't clam up, clam up or uh, feel like something is wrong or that they've done something wrong? Absolutely. I think that is the key aspect, is that you need to foster an environment that is safe and secure because a child is not going to disclose anything when they feel right. threatened or unsafe right. because that's kind of the situation they're in already with the abuse they feel they can't trust anyone they feel violated and so we don't want to perpetuate that in any way it also becomes quite complex because we don't want to lead them on and mm. also sort of insinuate any ideas and think that they need to say something's right. happened in order yeah. for us to um, respond or to give yeah. them sufficient attention. So it's really complex, but I think it's about creating that safe space for them to approach you, creating the opportunity for dialogue, and then observing their behavior and then yes. um, seeking the necessary help. Yes. And I mean, what are some of the things we should tell our children about how to protect themselves or recognize when something untoward is happening and it makes them feel comfortable, uncomfortable? Well, we always with young kids, you talk about the different types of touches. Um, there's good touch, bad touch, and private touch. And good touch is something that we all want to do. We want to encourage with our kids. We want to really be affectionate. We want to love them, yeah, yeah, kiss yeah. them, just so that they can feel that we're there. Yeah. Bad touch is when someone violates you in, in spaces that are not okay to do so. And private touch is obviously, especially as kids get older, just exploring themselves and their bodies and that kind of thing. And it's really important for kids to know what is okay and what's not okay right. around their bodies. Exactly. Why is it important for children who have been abused to go for therapy? I think it is critically mm. important. I think mm. I can tell you how I often end up with adults even sitting on my couch um, who have been exposed to abuse that still struggle because they haven't been able to process and just work through that experience that they've had. And so for kids to go through the therapy process, it's so critically helpful. Yeah. You know, kids don't have the verbal um, capacity to actually think about and process the experience that has happened to them as we do as adults. So yes. adults are a lot more intellectual. We can kind of explain our way through things. We rationalize, we use logic. But for kids, their, their primary in, or mode of engagement is not through verbal interaction. It's through behavior and play and that kind of thing. Right. And so we can't expect them to necessarily even come out and tell someone that they are being abused. It's often in the behavior, which is the realm that they use to speak, yes. that they are telling you that something's not okay. Something's not and okay. that's why the therapy is really important because it provides that space to work through and, tools. and yes. process yes. whatever has happened to them. Jenny, just briefly, um, just share with us what if somebody is at home watching this and they've just found this out or suspect that this is what their child going through how can they get help I think the immediate thing that needs to happen is that the abuse needs to be stopped so what we know is that so often abuse is ongoing it's not actually just this once-off incident that happens sure it's ongoing as in the movie that we've got into, Disak Anna, it can be four or five years that it goes on for. And so if you even suspect that there's abuse, the, the most critical thing is to ensure that it is stopped immediately. And that is to remove the child from the environment that is abusive. Um, so to get them to a place where they feel safe. And then there are a variety of things that you can do. There are clinics you can contact. Our social services will be really helpful. You need to get a social yeah, worker out yeah. to ensure that we can keep this child safe. Yeah. Thank you so much, Jenny, for sharing with Thanks, us. Thanks, Bonnie. Let's cross over to Danilo, who tells us how to take care of our furry animals. Indeed. We'll be back on the cast later on with Jenny uh, after the break to continue this important discussion. So if you have any questions or comments, South Africa, please make sure you call us right now, 0839133728. But for now, on a lighter note, pet dental checkups are becoming a co as common as annual human consultations at the dentist. We visited Dr. Tut at Cape Animal Medi Center uh, to find out why dental care is important for our furry friends. Take a look. Pet owners are aware of the importance of protecting their pet from illness, caring for their bones and skin, and ensuring they get good nutrition. But we often overlook the importance of the pet's oral health. 
unlike Dr. Cedric Tutt, who specializes in animal dentistry. You know, originally pets used to eat a, a fairly balanced diet that contained um, skin and bone and tendons in it and those used to physically help to clean the teeth. But these days we've domesticated the dog and the diets that we have don't always clean the teeth physically. So it's good to um, have a good examination of the dog and then to have them cleaned professionally. Generally speaking, Pets would have their teeth checked at their annual examination when they have their vaccinations and dewormers. But if an animal is younger, then we'd like the dental checks to be done more frequently. So young puppies would be seen at their first vaccination six to eight weeks. And then again, when that system of vaccinations is done, probably at three months. And then beyond that, six months and then annually after that. As a pet owner, you can help maintain good oral health by cleaning your dog's teeth, either with a soft piece of gauze or using a special dog toothbrush. Yes, it's a very good idea to brush the pet's teeth. Normally when we look in an animal's mouth, some people say, oh dear, the dog's got bad teeth. But usually it's not the teeth that are bad, it's the gums that are bad. So we need to make sure that the brush that we use is gentle on the gums and that the toothpaste is something obviously that they're going to swallow. So it shouldn't contain fluoride or something like that. Dental disease is more common as the animal ages. This is why it becomes important to have an annual checkup or make use of specialist veterinarian dental services. Interestingly, only 8% of pets are presented to the veterinarian with a dental problem. In other words, the client will come in and say, um, I noticed this morning that there was blood in my dog's water bowl, or I noticed some um, yelping, or um, the dog's been pouring at the mouth. So the rest of the cases, which is 92% of the cases, the vet will need to find. And usually that's found at the annual health check when we give the animal a, a thorough examination, and we then open the mouth and have a look at the teeth as well. The initial check is done conscious, if, if the animal will allow it. Some animals won't allow you to examine the mouth and those have to be sedated and then anaesthetized. But in the normal healthy animal, they will come in, we'd have a conscious examination, and then once the conscious examination has been performed, we would give a sedative and following that an anaesthetic. And then the animal is maintained on a gas anaesthetic for the procedure. And once we're done, we switch the anaesthetic gas off, leave them on oxygen until they've recovered and then wake them up fully. Between dental care visits and regular brushing at home, your pets can enjoy Bob Martin dental care sticks, which assist in reducing tartar and plaque and give your canine friend fresh minty breath. Well, there you have it. Today, we are giving away another Bob Martin hamper to the value of 500 Rand. And all you need to do is SMS the keyword Bob Martin, your name and city, to 33728, and you could be the lucky winner. Don't forget, SMSs cost 1 Rand 50. T's and C's apply and are available on our website, afternoonexpress.co.za. So get out those phones and make sure you get SMSing right now. After the break, we continue the important discussion around child abuse. We'll be right back. Show them how much you love them with Bob Martin. Welcome back to Afternoon Express, South Africa. So in the kitchen today, we're making delicious maple and I think it's mustard correct, yes. chicken wings. And they sound incredible. They smell delicious. <laughs> and all the sides are about to be compiled so far. And there's so much going on in this kitchen. You're going to have to take us through a recap of what it is that we've that got we've going done. on here. So let's start this idea. This is all the veg that we, well, myself and you were prepping earlier on okay. with the garlic and the rosemary and the olive oil. That's it, done, finished roasting. The chicken, as you can see, glazed in the oven and it looks ever so uh, stunning. And then just on the other side as well, I've just taken a sweet corn on the side mm -hmm. and we've got a chipotle batter with lime here, which we're just gonna finish that off with. I've just char grilled it during the break and okay. if you just don't mind, just spreading sure. some butter over it. So what is chipotle butter with lime? I'm guessing it's got lime in it and it's got butter in it, but what's chipotle? So chipotle basically, it's jalapeno peppers which have been smoked Say and dried. Jalapenos. Say that again? Jalapenos okay, or well jalapenos. Mm, jalapenos, jalapeno. <laughs> but they're basically jalapeno peppers which have been dried and then mm. smoked afterwards Ooh. just to get that wonderful flavor from them. So okay, I'll just start so plating this coat these. Yeah. So mm. literally you can see how stunning the veg looks with the skin on, on the onions. Yes. And it smells delicious as well. It does indeed. So why are all of these sides for something like chicken wings? Are these just like your favorites? Well, it just, I thought it would go stunning with what we've actually got here today as well, so okay. why not? This sounds like one of those ones for a perfect Sunday afternoon, sort of relaxed, around the fire. That is correct. I mean, just one, like if it was a, a cold Sunday evening, this would be the stunning dish to go with it. Yeah. So that's, I'll just leave the veg there. 
Cool, that's perfect. That's enough, I don't know. Cool. I'm kind of keen on this butter. That's <laughs> why uh, you, you kind of like, that's, that's enough, Danilo. You can stop there. That's perfect. So this is also, I've just been looking at all the different ingredients you've been using, and technically it looks to me like if you had a braai at home, you could probably make this stuff without needing any electricity whatsoever. So that's you could load shedding, awesome. Perfect. This, this right here, Perfect on the braai. All you right. need to do is just get the fire going. And your veggies too. I mean, you could put your, wrap your veggies in some tin foil and get them done that and side. With the, with the corn as well. Okay. So what if, am I doing if you don't this? mind just plating that for me. Sure. You can use the spoon. We've got oh. a dressing. We'll just put that on the side just if people cool. do want. And then just to finish it off, we'll just put the chicken wings straight directly on top of our slaw, actually. Oh, lovely. Even before I put my sauce on. Okay. <laughs> fine. <laughs> no, it's fine. It's just, Jump the gun. This is no fine dining mm. or anything. It's just very rustic. Mix all those flavors together. Looks exactly. cool. I'm gonna throw this away. There we go. And that's our meal, Done basically. Done and dusted. Done, as you can oh, see. It looks so delicious. And don't forget, South Africa, obviously, if you want all of these ingredients, you want the recipes, you want the shopping list, afternoonexpress.co.za is where you can find all of these and more. It's an absolutely valuable website to go to when it comes to cooking some yeah. amazing <laughs> dishes. So the only thing I'm missing here is something to drink. Well, recently, Bonnie sat down with Liesl Bygate, the spokesperson for Fresh Pack in Stain City, to discuss their new range of green rooibos. Take a look. Welcome to our Fresh Pack Natural Goodness Series. Now we've all heard of and even tried green tea. We know that it's trendy, we know that it's healthy, but today we'll be talking about a slightly different take on our traditional green tea and a very exciting new launch from our favorite rooibos tea. Joining me is Liesl Bygate to tell us more. So Liesl, what is green rooibos and how does it differ from other green teas? Well, traditional green tea actually comes normal black tea. It actually still contains caffeine like normal black tea. Green rooibos is something completely different. It comes from the rooibos plant, and it's also processed a bit differently to give a very mild green tea, high in antioxidants, but the main difference between green rooibos and traditional green tea is that green rooibos is caffeine-free because it's rooibos. How can green rooibos improve your health? Well, green tea um, contains very high levels of antioxidants uh, called polyphenols, and these are even higher in green rooibos. And as we know, antioxidants are the good things that protect our cells from damage from free radicals. It's also very high in minerals, which is good for your health. And of course, it's caffeine free, which makes it a much healthier beverage choice. Does green rooibos taste different from other green teas? It definitely does. Green tea can be quite harsh to the taste because it's, it's high in tannins whereas green rooibos has got a much milder, more palatable taste. It's a bit sweeter, so much easier to drink. And because it's rooibos, you can actually drink it in many different ways. You can drink it as a normal hot beverage, or you can use it to make delicious cold beverages like smoothies and iced teas, which are wonderfully refreshing in the summer months. Liesl, thank you so much for joining us. It's been great having you. Joining us, it's been great having you. <laughs> Now, if you're a rooibos fan, just like I am, you'll definitely be adding the green rooibos to your tea collection at home. With this refreshing flavor and numerous health benefits, it's the perfect choice and ultimate in healthy living. Until next time, keep well with the goodness of fresh packed rooibos. Fresh pack, goodness comes naturally. Salati Plantation Select adds subtle sweetness to toffees, caramel, bran muffins or sprinkled into a spicy curry. Salati. Always good, always sweet. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. We're discussing child abuse in the studio today. And uh, I actually just wanted to go back to the film, Dis Ak Anna, and to, to chat about, there was a, a bit of controversy surrounding the age restriction on the film. You, they wanted to make it 17 or they brought it down. What was the story around that? Yeah, the film, they wanted to make it 18. Mm -hmm. And then I'm very glad they brought it down to 16 because before I got part of, the, part of this film, I never knew about the consequences sexual abuse could have on somebody's life. And I think it's important for teens or kids my age to also know about the impact it can have exactly. on somebody's life. 
But it was a whole court case. Was it, was it the, the cast and the crew of the film who actually said, no, the age restriction need to be lowered? How did that work? No, it, it, it was the producers, yeah. you know, that, that decided that okay. um, they always wanted to make the film for teenagers to watch. And um, it, it was made not for us, but it was made for them, I think, you know. And, yeah. I, and, I, and I think they also realized film can entertain and it will entertain, but sometimes film educates as well. Um, without being preachy, it just mm -hmm. shows you the truth, and mm. by showing that truth, you, you you take something more out of it than yeah. just entertainment. Of course. Now, if I can ask the question, I think to you, at what point is showing truth and maybe desensitizing a younger audience? I mean, is is that a thing? I mean, to, for kids to be exposed to something like this in a movie, is is it exposing the truth and giving and empowering them, or is it maybe desensitizing them? Well, I think it's so spot on. That's exactly where we are with today's world of social media and so much available to young people. Is that we are constantly desensitized, whether it's with crime and um, with violence. Mm -hmm with sexuality, mm -hmm. we're constantly desensitized. Uh, but I think it's an important point, but I think it out is outweighed by the fact that we need to educate our kids. We need to tell them what is okay and what isn't mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. And we can't send them out vulnerable without actually knowing any sort of idea or having any idea about what is allowed and what isn't allowed mm -hmm. and what's okay yeah. and not. Yeah. So I think education is key for yeah. parents and kids. Yeah, we just got word that we did have a caller online, but I think we lost our caller. Yeah. But the bottom line of what she was saying is that you have to tell someone. If you, Even if you can't tell your parents, make mm -hmm. sure you tell someone, speak up. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And sister, I suppose that's what made you such an amazing mother and such an amazing adoptive mother, mm -hmm. is probably the ability for all these children to be able to come to you and speak to you about anything. Yes, uh, we always have a platform where we sit together with the girls and boys, but according to their ages. And also we, we've had a couple of children who have been brought in by the social workers because they needed to be removed from the, from the environment, which is uh, uh, destructive to them, mm -hmm. especially with sexual abuse. So yeah. we work from there and then we consult the psychologist to deal with it. Even if they've not been um, sexually abused, we don't wait for them to be sexual. As, as um, the psychologist said, we need to empower them to be able to tell. So they, they tell me anything because we're just working together as mother, daughter, or son and Exactly. That's mother. Awesome. Mm. I would tell yeah. you anything. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Jenny, is, is neglect a form of abuse as well? Absolutely. I think it's one that's often overlooked because it might not be as severe as something like sexual abuse or physical abuse. Mm. But neglect is something that really affects mm. people and, and with long term consequences down the line. Um, mm. And it's one that's certainly starting to be considered more and more because we know that the effects are very serious. What happens to abusers? Like, do they go for therapy as well? Like, mm -hmm. if they don't go to jail, yeah. are they? Because aren't they put back into society now? Yeah, well, like, sexual offenders actually are put back into society, no? Well, they can be, certainly. It depends, I think, what, what happens with the case. But w there's an interesting dynamic. It becomes quite complex because a lot of the time victims, and especially with kids, victims actually become abusers themselves, even with young kids. Mm -hmm. So they don't realise that it's something terrible like abuse, mm -hmm. but they actually reenact the sexualised behaviour mm -hmm. with other kids. And mm -hmm. so that's why this whole cycle is just perpetuated mm -hmm. and goes on and on and on. Mm -hmm. So victims, a lot of the time, more often than not, victims themselves then become abusers. And mm -hmm. that's why intervention is needed to stop that pattern. Yeah. Yeah. Shame, man. It's absolutely devastating yeah. what can happen. Yeah. So, so sad. We do have dinner to serve you, so we are incredibly grateful that you all came through to the studio. Mm -hmm. We do have dearest Danilo, who uh, is such a gem in the kitchen. I'm, 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 almost, I'm almost like the adoptive son of this table. I make, make you guys dishes, I look after you. No, never. You're the gentleman of the house. You this guys are welcome delicious. to dig in. Yeah, absolutely. There's some roast yeah, veg that we've got for you, some maple and uh, mustard chicken wings that Andla helped us put together, as well as, uh, what, what is that? Uh, butter called? Do you want to start dishing chipotle up? Chipotle and lime <laughs> butter. Do you want to start dishing up? I can't reach. It's <laughs> far. Okay. <laughs> okay. okay. We've also got an our winner of that book. Yeah, we've actually got two winners. They would be giving away two books. And the first winner is Jay Dixon from Durban. Congratulations. And Tabby Sile from P Peter Maritzburg. Congratulations. You've got yourself um, a copy of that fantastic, fantastic memoir.
I cannot wait for it to come out. It's going to be released yeah. very soon? Very soon. It will be released. How long did it take you to write it? Uh, it took me two years because of sure. being busy with the orphanages that I've started. Uh, I started in, 10, in 2009 and then I finished it in 2012, mm. but it has been uh, in, in America yes, at San sure. Francisco most of the time. But my heart was saying, I wish I could have more funding and people who are, who are compassionate who can bring this book to yeah. South Africa also. It's, it's yeah. not for South Africa, it's not for America, it's for the whole world. Well, it's mm. such an amazing, amazing story. Thank you so much, sister, for coming through. Thank you so much to all of our guests as well. Best of luck with the film. Yeah. We certainly hope you get all those awards from festivals yeah. across the world. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank, you. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you tomorrow, same time, same place. Happy eating and good evening. Ciao. <laughs> Coming up tomorrow on Afternoon Express, we bring you some of the latest creations from jewellery designer Catherine Pachulik, and we get under the skin with radio personality Twala Ngambi. Another Feel Good Production. Hi YouTubers, thank you so much for watching the show. Be sure to not miss another episode by clicking subscribe right over there. <laughs> and we'll see you every day. Afternoon Express. Enjoy.